picture. Thank picture. you guys for coming. Um, I'm Jacob Burgess. I'm a Boy Scout from Troop 315 in Berwick, Maine. And I'm the Boy Scout that worked on this trail. And it was a busy few months. <laughs> and we finally finished it, maybe two, three weeks ago. And we're really proud of what we accomplished. And that is myself, um, my troop, my friends, my family, my dad, there he is. Um, <laughs> yes. <laughs> I haven't even said anything yet. <laughs> so, um, I just want to say just a few things about um, just how much this means to me and how I hope this, um, how I hope you, much you guys uh, enjoy this trail because, you know, we've worked hard and we really hope that it's worth it and that you guys enjoy it and it's, the town will use it for years to come. And so, yeah. First of all, I'd like to thank my dad. Um, he's been there and helped me with like everything, um, as far as just being there when I needed like a little boost to work on my workbook <laughs> that I need to help, uh, that I need to use for my, to fill out the Eagle application and just with uh, helping me get uh, materials and bringing them out to the trail. And so just like to thank my dad first. and. The rest of my family, my grandparents, my uncles, my aunts, my mother, my sister, thank you guys for helping me both on the trail and just in general. You guys have always been there, so thank you. Um, my troop and my venture crew. Um, I haven't been in a venture crew very long, but you guys are really um, cool and it's been fun the last few months. And you know, my troop, I've been in I've been in Boy Scouts since 2009, so that's this is my fifth year in Boy Scouts and before that I was in Cub Scouts and so Boy Scouts is a big part of my life and so you know it's it's really made me who I am and so thank you for that um, and then just my friends and the whole community thank you for allowing me to make this trail so thank you. My parents, yes. thank you all for coming um, First, before I get going on my thoughts here, right, I'd like to call up Stephen Janaka and David Stansfield. Come right up. <laughs> Jacob thanked his friends, but I really want you guys to understand that we, we had a couple of weekends that we invited scouts and whatnot, but the younger scouts really weren't slated for a lot of the things that we had to do. These two gentlemen, along with Anthony Albanese, who's not here tonight, um, are Jacob's friends through school, and combined, they've dedicated 152 hours to this trail. Stephen has dedicated 70 hours himself. And, and I'm not talking about, let's just show up and have some fun and rake some grass. I'm talking about a four foot sled, 170 log pieces, and shin deep mud every time for six days and three of those days we were getting rained on all day every day some days we had one day that we did 12 hours with a smile and we had fun every every day of it and i personally will never forget what you guys have done and i'm sure the town will never forget either so i thank you tell you a little story. You two can leave now. <laughs> and I wrote this all down so I won't screw it up, but I'll probably screw some of it up. And I'm not a very good public speaker, but I'll do my best. Back in January, coming back from a trails committee meeting that we attended, at the meeting it was discussed what the dedication was going to be. And some people jokingly said we dedicated to Jacob. I, of course, knew that Jacob didn't want anything dedicated to him. So on the way back in the truck, because he didn't have his license yet, and I had to bring him everywhere, <laughs> I said, uh, what do you think you want to do? Without a hesitation, he said he wanted to de dedicate it to his grandfather. At that point, a lot of things went through my mind. 
and I thought about the Burgess name that's been in this town for over 100 years. And my dad is the last remaining member. We all grew up, all of us, my brother, my sister, my cousins. We stayed close, but we moved away. And my dad is the last remaining Burgess name of that lineage. But I knew that he would not want to be the spectacle of this trail. He wouldn't want to stand out. He's lived here his entire life, except for the two years that he was in service. Literally born on Bridge Street. But nonetheless, I explained to Jake that Grandpa wouldn't want to be in the spotlight. I thought about who to dedicate Jake's hard work to. But I did think about my dad, his brothers and sister growing up in this town. Four out of the five Burgess brothers served this country. One paid the ultimate price. My dad was young, but in conversation he told me that he remembers the goings on in the 40s. And if anybody's gone to the Memorial Day, they've heard Robert Burgess in the role of WW2. I'm going to read to you a copy of a letter that was sent to my grandparents. This hangs in Jacob's room. Whether it's sentimental or historical value, he's had this for quite a while. January 2nd, 1946. Dear Mr. and Mrs. Burgess, your son Robert Byrne Burgess, aviation machinist mate third class, United States Navy Reserve, has been carried on the official records the Navy Department in the status of missing in action as of 13 November 1944. Your plane, the plane your son was aboard in a flight of eight planes from Torpedo Squadron 11 took off from the USS Hornet to participate in an airstrike against enemy shipping in Manila Bay, Luzon Island in the Philippines. The planes encountered intense anti-aircraft fire during their drive dive on the target. The plane which your son was aboard was hit by enemy fire and exploded and crashed in Manila Bay. To date, no further information has been received by the Department of, Concern of Navy concerning the fate of your son. In view of the strong probability that your son lost his life when the plane which he was flying was hit by enemy aircraft fire, exploded and crashed into the water, because no official nor unconfirmed reports have been received that he, he survived because his name has not appeared on any list or reports of personnel liberated from the Japanese prisoner of war camps. And in the view of the length of time that has elapsed since he is reported missing in action, I reluctantly forced to the conclusion that he is deceased. In compliance with Section 5 of Public Law 490, 77th Congress, as amended, the death of your son is, for the purposes of termination of pay and allowances, settlements of accounts, and payment of death gratuities, presumed to have occurred 14 November 1945. I know that little solace, the formal and written word, can be to help meet the burden of your loss, but in spite of that knowledge, I cannot refrain from saying, very simply, I am sorry. It is hope that you may find comfort in the thought that your son gave his life for his country, upholding the highest traditions of the Navy. And it is signed, James Forrestal. So, back to the truck ride. At the end of the drive home, 
I suggested that he dedicate this trail to all the veterans, explaining that it would not be in Grandpa's, that would be in Grandpa's memory without being in the spotlight. And as for the Burgess name remaining, remaining in the town, there is a plaque in the town hall with the names of scouts that have been obtained the rank of Eagle. Donald Burgess, my brother, 1981, and soon Jacob Burgess, 2014. I ask the Legion to read the plaque for dedication. Charles S. Hatch, post number 79, Berwick, is pleased to dedicate to the men and women of Berwick who answered the call to defend the country, the Penny Pond Recreational Trail. Thank you. I asked my dad Come join my son and open up this trail. So the trail is now open. If you guys please uh, feel free to take a nice stroll down through Berwick and see Penny Pond. Guided. Yeah, mm -hmm. guided by myself. <laughs> <laughs> Are you coming? I'm going to go.